Okay, Angela, what did we find here? Uh, found a brooch about the size of my palm. Hey guys, this is Katie with Vintage and Vinyl back with another great video for you today. And in this video, I'm excited to share more of my adventures in St. Louis with Dear Angela's Vintage. It's so exciting to actually get to meet someone in person that you've talked to for over two years on the phone. We've had a ball. We've had a wonderful tour of St. Louis food. And we've gotten to really do a lot in the short time she was visiting with me in St. Louis. So I'm excited to share all that with you today. In this video, I've got future vlogs coming out with more of my excursions and fun travels. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And of course, like always, I'm filming another wacky intro because I cannot seem to remember to get the intros filmed. They get all the other content filmed. And then I realized, oh shoot, I don't have an intro. I must be still in vacation mode. But I can't wait to share all this with you, so stick around. So one of the places that was recommended to me to eat was the Fountain on Locust. And this is a pretty famous place. They're known for their dill pickle soup. It was recommended to me by Barb over at Winking Owl Antiques. And this was built in 1916. It was a showroom for automotive cars. The Supreme Car Company was here and they built Stutz cars right in the back. So Barb definitely picked a great place because the Fountain on Locust is amazing. The Art Deco interior is great. Great. And of course, the food is pretty yummy, and we had a chance to try their dill pickle soup. They're known for this. Sounds a little wacky, but it's got a wonderful dill flavor with sour cream and potatoes. Oh, so delicious. And I'm thrilled that Angela got to meet up with my cousin Jimmy and Aunt Mariana. They're wonderful people in St. Louis, and we just had a ball. So Angela and I found this place called the Vintage Haberdashery, and look at all the amazing brooches they have here in this case, and vintage jewelry. I'm loving that 1960s white and kind of peachy orange set, along with all the sparklers they have in this case. And check out the store, folks. It's pretty amazing. Hats galore. The lady just said they do a lot of derby hats before the Kentucky Derby and all those parties. But vintage clothes, this is definitely pure heaven for anybody that is into all this vintage fashion. Look at that fabulous lady there in the window. Oh my gosh, this place is amazing. There's so many cool fabrics and textures and fun things to see here at the Vintage Haberdashery in St. Louis. How many look so far? Racks and racks and racks of vintage clothes. I mean, I can't fit into any of this, but it's really cool to see. Look at this prom dress. Ooh, that's so Golden Girls. And then all of this fabric, very 1960s here. Oh my gosh, look at the hats. All right, guys, we might have to have some fun here trying on some hats. Do you see any hats you think I should have? I might need this hat right here in my life. That is pretty fabulous. And Angela says, no, I don't need it. <laughs> look at this hat, that is funky in the best way. Oh my gosh, how much fun. Now, this hat rack is more my style. Check out all of these fun hats. Lots of pinch front fedoras. We've got some bucket hats, derby hats, all kinds of fun things, bowler hats, even little newsboy caps. I'm really liking that fedora down there. Actually, that might be a Hamburg hat. Hard to tell from here, but it's got that beautiful blue-green ribbon on the side. Just a lot of fun style here at the Vintage Haberdashery. Well, we are in the Green Shag Market, and this is pretty cool because this place was recommended to me by Barb, Winking Alley Antiques. And this place looks wonderful. It is absolutely massive. I love this big wave mural they have on the wall here and lots of other really cool boots. It goes all the way in the back and it just looks like this is going to be so much fun. So thanks Barb for the recommendation. I can't wait to see what they have. Jamie, this one's for you. Look at these fun do picks. Aren't these fun? They have the wood handles with the different little colored tops on them. Very mid-century. Oh my gosh, I love these. 
always wanted to have a vintage fondue party, but I don't know when that will happen, but you can have this set for $22, which seems really reasonable. And man, that's so much fun. So I love all things advertising, as you guys know, and this little display here in the green shag is cool. It's got a whole bunch of fruit crate labels, and I have an affinity for these. They're so wonderful, the colors, the graphics, the designs, and I wanted to show you these in the front here. Look at the snow owl pears and Deermark brand sweet potatoes. How much fun are these? And for $8, you can't beat it. Lots of fabulous graphics here. So I feel like this is something that Magpie Ethel would pick up, but I thought this was so adorable. Look at this. Show off your get well cards. Cheer up. And they're little pins for all your little cards. Oh my gosh, that's so adorable with the bunny. So this booth is totally up my alley. I mean, look at that amazing card catalog, but check this out. This is a Coca-Cola airline cooler. These are smaller. Now this one's priced at $3.75, which is probably about where it should be. It's got the bottle opener on the side and it's much slimmer than some of the other picnic coolers that you would have seen made back in the day for Coca-Cola. And look, they've got some other ones and an earlier yellow bottle crate with some incredible advertising here in this booth and great card catalogs. I'm just obsessed with these. Okay, so this is more of this fabulous booth that I just showed and Golly bum, these are amazing. These are all little hardware cabinets. And look at the front, pick hooks and fasteners, electrical, drill bits, knobs, windows and hinges. Oh, I cannot, I love these and these are green. Oh my gosh. And look at this, they have the ever ready miniature lamps. Oh, this might be coming home with me guys. Okay, Angela, what did we find here? Uh, found a brooch about the size of my palm. So if Holy anyone's cow. looking for a brooch that size, we found one. <laughs> that is it's a only honker. It's $15. <laughs> looky, looky, when I found a vintage panther with a chain. Oh my gosh, he is pretty fabulous. Look at those green Jimmy eyes. $75 doesn't seem terrible for something like this. And they have a lion decanter next to it and a giant mid-century cat. And of course, you can see those Lucite grapes and that Hager Gazelle in the background there. This is a pretty cool little booth. And I love the dog sunglass holder. So this mall is full of tons of mid-century modern. And check out this GE Starburst clock. I'm kind of falling in love with this. I have no place to put it, so it's going to stay here. But that is just so fabulous, I had to show you. And of course, I've got a giant ewer here. And look at this i've never seen this color before very interesting kind of aqua agate slag glass uh, pair of mugs with the birds and the flowers i just thought these were quite lovely interesting not exactly sure who made these different companies did make the slag glass but that is phenomenal what a great color wow this lady has all the glass Everything from those Belgium apothecary jars to Empoli. I mean, this is incredible. And look at this purple Blanco double pour pitcher right here. That's pretty cool. And then if you come around here, of course, she's got lots of brass, but more of these Empoli brandy sniffers there in the back. Wow, wow, wow. That is pretty cool. She's got such an eclectic little booth here with tons of things. Look at these white ball glasses in the animate. These, just fantastic. Uh, man, <laughs> unusual and cool curated booth. Okay, Angela, I think we hit some of the mid-century modern jackpot. What is this right here? Well, it's a Royal Hager Giselle. Oh my gosh, that is fabulous. How I much know. is he? hundred dollars even you know so well he may not be coming home with us but he yeah. is pretty cool pretty i love awesome. that color and look at this lamp isn't this amazing with the fiberglass shade holy cow that is quick i mean nate would love that yes nate would he's always trying to get the one from fat bird finds <laughs> oh jamie next time you come to st louis we gotta hit the green shag so much mid-century modern here. Look at all of this furniture. 
and that brutalist lamp over there. Holy cow, you'd be in pure heaven. Well, Angela and I are in the Del Mar Loop, again, one of my favorite places here in St. Louis. I just love how eclectic this is. The neon signs are fabulous. There's so many cool little shops and stores. And what we are going to do right now is go to Pin Up Bowl and Bowl, and I haven't bowled in years, so I'm so excited. Walking into the Pinup Bowl is like stepping back into the 1950s. I absolutely love this kind of Art Deco inspired drinks menu here on the wall. The font is absolutely amazing. Now, this place is not too busy in the afternoon, but about 9 o'clock it turns into an 18 plus bar and gets really hopping. I love all the images on the wall. They have a lot of bowling memorabilia and just cool stuff. It's a quaint little place. Been open about 25 years here on the Loop and they even have a women's bowling league that meets once a week. Check out all those lanes in the back. Hey everybody, here's Katie going up to bowl. He had to switch lanes because ours weren't working. So, Katie, are you got a spare, I think. Or she's doing much better than I am. And I don't know what to do had such a good time at the Pinup Bowl, and I highly recommend checking out their neon sign at night. If you're ever in the loop, it lights up and flashes. It is so cool. There's a lot of neat neon in the loop. Now, of course, I couldn't show you too much of the inside of the Pinup Bowl because, well, the pinups are a little saucy and a bit nude. Figured I might get demonetized here on my channel, but it's a great place to go bowling. And by the score here, you can see that Angela actually beat me in this game, but we did have a rematch, and I won that one. So you know you're in the hill district of St. Louis when all the fire hydrants are painted Italian colors. Oh, this is a fun little area. Now the hill is the Italian district of St. Louis and you can't really go more than a block without finding a wonderful family owned restaurant or some really cool architecture. There's a lot of shotgun houses here in this area and tons of old 1950s brick buildings, including this fabulous hardware store I ran across. I'm loving that neon sign. It does light up at night. Angela and I've had fun kind of eating around the hill and just sampling some of the amazing restaurants that they have. I've been to Ragazzi's, Mama's on the hill and Cunetto's. Of course, Charlie Guito's is here, a very famous restaurant on the hill. You really can't go wrong with any of them because like I said, a lot of them are family owned and they just have some good old fashioned Italian cooking and recipes. Now tonight, Angela and I have special guests in the car. We are with Jeffrey and Aaron from Real Nifty Vintage and we are headed to Mama's on the Hill to have a wonderful meal. And I will tell you, it was delicious. Now this sign was at one of the restaurants we saw driving through the hill and I had to stop and take a picture of it because I think it's just fabulous. It says, we shall Provel. Now Provel is a St. Louis cheese. It's very well known in the area and they put it on pizza and pasta and all kinds of things. And I just thought it was so clever. I had to show it to you. So after our wonderful meal on the hill, I took everybody to the famous Fitz's Root Beer in the Del Mar Loop. Now this opened in 1933, and before this location became Fitz's, it was actually an old bank. Now the cool thing about Fitz's is they have a pretty big menu full of all kinds of floats. It's a wonderful place to get dessert. I'm not a big ice cream fan, but I do love their floats. So good. And normally you can watch all of the bottles being bottled in the original bottling plant right here in the Loop location, but they're undergoing some remodeling so we didn't get a chance to see that this time but this is normally where that would happen and look at their floats so good fits us please I'm so glad Aaron got to come up to Union Station Hotel where Angela and I were staying and check out the old train station. I think he had a really good time with that. And of course, I got to request one of my favorite light shows, The History of St. Louis, because it talks all about the history of the train station and St. Louis in general. Now, this is an excellent show narrated by John Goodman, and I'm so glad we got a chance to see it. I'm going to insert a clip of it here, and hopefully YouTube doesn't take me down for the little bit of music it plays. <laughs> Thank you. 
I wish I could play the next segment of music with this light show, but unfortunately, it's copyrighted. This is one of these light shows that's a little harder to show on camera, but what we're seeing here is a depiction of thousands of soldiers getting ready to head out for battle in World War II, and Union Station saw the departure and arrival of many soldiers during the war. This light show with the music is just incredibly moving. It's definitely worth requesting if you're ever at Union Station. You can see all the planes start flying over overhead and the soldiers fighting in the war. I love how they've used the architecture here to really highlight the light show and some of the details of the train station ceiling. Now, I don't know where they got all of these letters from the war, but these are real war letters that they have put into the program here and got it running for the light show and they're all flying across the train station ceiling and guys it's just amazing and you can start seeing more of the planes and the war and some of the soldiers being reunited with their loved ones now i know a lot of people actually never got reunited and that is a really sad fact but i love that this union station light show does depict the happy memories of people coming back into the train station and being reunited with their loved ones after the war i just love this the music is absolutely incredible because the lyrics of that particular song say that I'm working my way back to you. And then, of course, you start seeing all of these fireworks dance across the train station ceiling in celebration of all of those who returned after the war. We have really gotten to see a cool history of St. Louis here from the war and the train station all the way to Edison and the light bulb and, of course, the 1904 World's Fair. And this show is incredible with John Goodman's narrative. Well, guys, that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed taking a little tour with me around St. Louis. I had so much fun meeting Angela. I'll be having more content coming out on my channel very soon for you. I'm really excited about sharing the Telephone Museum with you guys. I got to interview the director of the Telephone Museum. He was excellent. It's going to take me a little bit to edit that video, so that may come out when I get back to Jacksonville, but I still have more content coming out for you, sharing all of my travels, and I cannot wait for you to see it. I have had the best time on my road trip here, going across the country and meeting all kinds of fun people. So before my next video, I'll be seeing you over on Instagram at vintage underscore and underscore vinyl, and I hope as always that you will stay in, stay safe, and binge YouTube. Bye-bye, everyone.